gonna make some videos. Wish me luck. See y'all then. Welcome to WebWorks. Good morrow, students. Let's take a carriage ride through the 13 colonies. Today, we're gonna review the Southern Colony. Southern Colonies, Geography and Climate. The geography of the Southern Colonies featured tideland ideal for growing crops, hilly coastal plains, broad rivers for transportation, forests, and swampy marshes. Virginia was the first successful Southern Colony. The Southern Colonies included Maryland, Virginia, North and South Carolina, and Georgia. This area is rich in natural resources, including fish, forests, and farmland. The Southern colonies are surrounded by rivers, harbors, and waterways that are full of fish. The Appalachian Mountains provided wood for building houses. The fertile soil and mild climate was perfect for farming all year round. Warmest of the three regions, winters not difficult to survive, but the hot and humid summers gave rise to the spread of disease. The warm climate made it possible to grow crops throughout the year and was ideally suited for plantations. Geography and climate. What did you write down? Let's take a look at your notes. The Southern Colonies, Economy, Tobacco Growing in the Mild Climate. African slaves worked the 17th century Virginia by an unknown artist in 1670. The economy of growing cash crops would require a labor force that would be unknown north of Maryland. Slaves and indentured servants, although present in the North, were much more important to the South. They were the backbone of the Southern economy. Many plantation owners grew large amounts of cash crops like tobacco, cotton, rice, and indigo. Indigo is used to dye cloth blue. This is an image of harvesting tobacco, the cash crop of the South. Economy notes. What did you write down? Let's take a look at your notes. The Southern Colonies History. The Jamestown settlement in the colony of Virginia was the first permanent English settlement in the Americas. Jamestown was the first English colony built in 1607. It almost failed because of food shortages, disease, and native attacks. Immediately to Virginia's north was Maryland. Begun as a colony to provide religious freedom for Catholics, the colony's economy would soon come to mirror that of Virginia, as tobacco became the most important crop. Winters in Maryland could get a little cold. A view of Savannah, Georgia, as it stood the 29th of March, 1734. Engraving by Pierre Foundre, after a drawing by Peter Gordon, London, 1735. English settlement began in the early 1730s after James Oglethorpe, a wealthy man in London, thought that the area would be colonized with the worthy poor of England. 
Georgia was also established in 1732 to protect South Carolina and other Southern colonies from Spanish invasion in Florida. Georgia was also known as what is called a penal colony, meaning that it was a colony settled by prisoners and debtors. History notes. What did you write down? Let's take a look at your notes. Welcome to Williamsburg. Please exit the carriage carefully, read about the city, then write a journal summarizing what you've learned. Life in the Southern Colonies Agriculture was the basis of life in the South. Many people dreamed of the wealth a successful plantation could bring them, but few Southerners achieved their dream of owning a plantation. The overwhelming majority of them were indentured servants, enslaved people, or simple farmers. Only a lucky few became wealthy planters who owned fabulous houses and vast stretches of land with their own access to the waterways. The plantation system limited trade because only a limited number of crops were grown. The growth of cities or urbanization was limited in the South because of the plantation system. Plantations evolved into little towns that produced almost everything for day-to-day -day needs. Wealthy planters could import directly from European markets. They could buy or hire a skilled servant to create items that weren't practical to import. With few cities, there was only a small middle class of urban professionals like teachers, merchants, artisans, or lawyers. The distance between plantations made community schools and sometimes even churches impractical. During the 1700s, the average life expectancy in the South was 10 to 30 years lower than the other English colonies due to disease and malnutrition. This had a dramatic effect on the development of family life and other aspects of society. Few children reached adulthood with two surviving parents. A web of step-parents and half-siblings meant kinship was often a powerful factor when it came to connections in business or leadership. Education in the Southern Colonies in the Southern colonies, children generally began their education at home because the distances between farms and plantations made community schools impossible. Plantation owners often hired tutors to teach boys math, classical languages, science, geography, history, manners, and plantation management. Most boys then completed their education in England. A governess usually taught the girls enough reading, writing, and arithmetic to run a household and social skills. Class differences were the greatest in the South, where only upper-class men were widely educated. In Virginia, literacy among the male upper-class upper was almost 100%, and only 40% of laborers, 25% of upper-class women, and 1% of enslaved people could sign their names. Slavery Slavery started in the American colonies in 1619 when the first enslaved Africans were purchased in Jamestown. Over the years, the demand for slavery would lead to an increase in the slave trade and Africans being brought against their will to the southern colonies. In 1776, 20% of the population in the 13 colonies was of African descent. The legalized practice of enslaving Af Africans occurred in every colony, but was centered in the South. During the Revolutionary Era, more than half of all African Americans lived in Virginia and Maryland. Most enslaved Africans lived in, Ches in the Chesapeake region, where they made up more than 50 to 60% of the overall population. The most, but not all, of these Africans were enslaved. In fact, 
the first official United States census taken in 1790 showed that 80% of the African American population was free. The majority of African Americans living in the southern colonies worked on tobacco plantations and large farms. Since the cultivation of tobacco was extremely labor intensive, slave labor was used. Tobacco was an 11 month crop. Cultivation began in late January with the preparation of the fields for planting, mending tools, and laying out of seeds. Once the soil was ready in March, tobacco seedlings were transported to the fields. By midsummer, tobacco was growing in the fields, but the delicate plant required constant care. At harvest time, tobacco was gathered and prepared for its shipment to England. For enslaved people working on farms, the work was very difficult. A variety of food crops and livestock usually required enslaved people to work throughout the year. Life was harsh. Enslaved people working on plantations were more likely to be sold or transferred than those who were enslaved for housework. They were also subject to brutal and severe punishment. The Triangle Trade the triangular trade system was a trading system that developed in the 1700s. This system explains the movement of goods from the Americas to Europe, manufactured items from Europe to Africa, and enslaved Africans to the Americans. Natural resources and cash crops like sugar, tobacco, and cotton were sent to Europe and sold. Manufactured goods from Europe, including textiles, rum, and weapons, were used to purchase Africans who were sent in slavery to the Americas. This system is also referred to as the transatlantic slave trade. The Middle Passage. The Middle Passage refers to the voyage of enslaved Africans from their home on the African continent to slavery in the Americas. Starting in the 1500s, over 12.5 million Africans were enslaved and sold in the Americas. Europeans purchased, traded, or enslaved Africans to work in the plantations in the North and South, and Africans from West and Central Africa were violently captured and transported across the Atlantic Ocean in a brutal process called the Middle Passage. The death rate for Africans brought to the Americas was much higher than the approximately 1 million that died during the Middle Passage. It included those who died in Africa when their communities were attacked, followed by the march to the coast, and those who died shortly after arriving in the Americas. The enslavement of millions of Africans forever changed the continent of Africa. History of Williamsburg. Williamsburg was a thriving capital of Virginia when the dream of American freedom and independence was taking shape. The colony of Virginia was a rich and powerful colony stretching west to the Mississippi River and north to the Great Lakes. For 81 years, from 1699 to 1780, Williamsburg was the political, cultural, and educational center of what was then the largest, most populous, and most influential of the American colonies. It was there that the fundamental concepts of our republic, responsible leadership, a sense of public service, self-government, and individual liberty, thrived under the leadership of patriots such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and George Mason. Near the end of the Revolutionary War, and though and through the influence of Thomas Jefferson, the seat of government of Virginia was moved up the peninsula to the safer and more centrally located city of Richmond. For nearly a century and half afterward, Williamsburg was a simple, quiet college town, home of the College of William and Mary. Now it's time to write your journal entry. Complete this assignment in Google Classroom under Exit Ticket, Southern Colonies. Return to this video to re-watch our Stop in the Southern Colonies if you need.
Don't forget, copy and paste your notes into your Unit 1 digital notebook. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.